I'm Elia Haber for the Beirut Banyan. It's Monday noon. We're still in the aftermath of the cancellation of the parliamentary session this morning. While walking to Martyr Square, I'm still not inside. I see two men exiting. They look very tired, which is understandable. Here's their story. Uh, Saman Khanwam, I'm 45. I'm a painter and a writer. Saman, I usually don't see many people here during the day. It's mostly active towards early evening and maybe towards 9 p.m. Um, how do you feel about what happened this morning? We had a, a legislative ses session, so we, we tried to block the roads from last night, but they beat us to it anyway. It's their business and they're doing it right. Uh, but again, it was a win for us, for the revolution today. It was cancelled. I was home listening to some of the statements that were put out and would like to have your opinion on those. One of them is the parliament still represents a portion of the people, if not all of the people, at least a portion of them, and that portion would like to perform their duties. How do you feel about that? Well, look, it's, we all know it's a corrupt system. okay? And the problem is, uh, how can I let someone corrupt and sectarian govern me. Okay, he, he can govern his own people, but not all of us. This is the problem. They don't represent the whole Lebanese society. It's been going on for the past 30 years, and enough is enough. Let's say later on, another portion of the people does the same and prevents parliament members that you think are representative from getting to the parliament. Would you feel the same? Well, us, we've never been to the parliament, so I guess it's our turn right now. They have been in the parliament for the past, again, 25, 30 years. Now it's our turn. Yeah. They need to give us a turn. Okay. I know it's hard, but again, uh, the country is bankrupt. Everything is not working. Okay. So I guess it's time for change. Uh, the thing is, even their own people are with us. Even if you don't see them in the streets, but we know that they are backing us up. Since you uh, brought up their own people, how are you currently managing your friendships or other family members who are still apprehensive about what's going on? How are you managing those conversations? Right, right now we are building a new Lebanon. So I don't care about my family, I don't care about friendships, I don't care about nothing. Right now is to implement new rules that can govern the whole society, that can give the rights, give, give the rights to all the people. Everybody is, is uh, damaged by this system, you know, us and them. But for my part, I don't have a leader. I am my own leader. My conscience is, a, is the leader. So they need to look at their conscience also again. And it's happening for the first time. I've been in the streets for, for the past 25 years. This is the first time we have a conscious a collective consciousness about everything that is happening so it's great it's just a month in a one month look at what we did in one month yes is there a reason or something that gave you that additional sense of hope in our consciousness in this particular uh, revolt usually Beirut is always the center of what is happening right now we have all all the surrounding cities Okay, from Tripoli to Sur to Nabatia, everybody is rising up, and this is what is this is what gave me hope. What this is what gave us all hope. It's not centralized anymore. Um, I'd like to also ask you, what have you learned in the past month, whether about yourself, your country, or your people? Well, uh, you have to wait. All, always, always, you have to keep up the faith. You know, never give up. And when you know that you're right. It has to pay up some someday, and it just happened after 25 years. So never give up. Revolution till the end. <laughs> For those of us who weren't here this morning, um, how would you sum up what happened, whether us being at home or expats that just woke up? Well, uh, again, again, it's another win. Uh, it's, a, it's a great day to the revolution, because again, we stop them from doing what they do at best, you know? And usually they come with their, their convoys, you know, and they block the roads, you know, and people get stuck in traffic for hours. 
look at the roads are all open and they had to come and sit in the parliament or in a hotel like mice you know they sneaked into the parliament this is a win even though they 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 fired at us but again this is someone who's losing his his power someone who's losing his his ground would do that zaran <laughs> what would you like to see happen next on the ground it's too early it's day by day now day by day you know and we were winning and we know what we want you know we know what we want them out the right person in the right position my last question to you is then uh, in a couple of years if you're looking back at this moment in our history what do you think people will remember or what would you want them to remember i don't know yet you know we're not done yet so let's keep the faith let let's hope for the best but be in the streets the streets will give you hope being in the streets will give you hope sitting in in home behind a tv you're you're doing nothing come to the streets even if you if you don't if you're not 100% with us just come to the streets uh roger ghanem i'm an artist i work in the field of production and acting and coaching my age is 40 uh, 45 if you don't mind me asking it's pretty early today um i guess you we were just talking about how tired you are you just want to go home after this long day what brought you here this morning besides protesting the government action but sometimes you have to rest a bit then go back if needed so it's not a long day it's a usual day i am here because it's not just about protesting it's about saying that we are aware i'm not saying i am aware we are aware about the bullshit that you are trying to to convince us with even after the revolution and i say it's a revolution it's not a protest because it's a revolution of our minds we are aware now so whatever you do you cannot stop the revolution in our minds you can stop our bodies but you can never stop our minds from thinking because it's done no going back um we've both seen action on the ground before this one what gives you hope that this action is a revolution unlike what happened before if if you if referring to the 14th of february it wasn't a revolution it was like a small light up because it was actually some people who made us move on the street but this time it's us we are going because we want to go it's not uh, any party it's not any zaim any any politician it's us and this is what is making them really afraid because they cannot stop it this is this is why it's a real revolution um the reason i'm asking you about why you think this is different yesterday i was at an interesting talk here Uh, one of the speakers said that we know what we don't want but we're still not sure what we want how do you feel about that actually i am sure we know what we want we want them to back up to leave the parliament and the politics for the people who want to do something for the for the country stop stealing our money and then we want to get back the money that they stole already and we know we are a very rich country in so many ways i'm not talking about gas i'm talking about our mines we are rich we have potentials this is our richness forget the oil forget everything else they want to stop our mines from working they want us to be slaves now this revolution changed everything whatever they will try it cannot be stopped what have you learned in the past month about yourself your compatriots or maybe your country i learned for the first time that we are one people because we passed all the all the things that our politicians and the war had made us think we are even though we we still maybe can belong to to some ideology to some parties but we know that we want to live to survive to be humans this what is uniting us and we know that those politicians even though 
we are still in a way maybe maybe not the young people maybe the elders maybe some people of my age they still are afraid because maybe they will lose something but they want to be free they want to be free and live in a country as as a human being first um, you also mentioned that the politicians had an effect on what we thought we were um, other conversations I keep having is that we're also still stuck in the civil war mentality and now we're trying to get away from that. On that topic, how are you dealing with people in your family, in your friend circle, who are still, as you mentioned, maybe afraid or hesitant about what's going on on the ground? Um, actually, they are still in the mentality of the civil war. They and some of their slaves and you know not the people let's say at least two million person so the other two million or three million that either they are afraid either they are still stuck in the civil war mentality they are afraid of something they are still slaves for the politicians in my surroundings let's say my family and friends almost let's say 80 percent of them they want the revolution they are in the revolution state so the 20 percent actually I say I hope you will be aware one day because we are going so f so fast now and you're going back so fast in the, in the other way so I don't do anything actually tell them look at the the people on the streets what they are demanding don't look at the small stuff that they are trying to say that oh listen the, these guys are asking for uh, hashish to be legal they just see the the only thing that might be bad but actually it's not they don't point at all the positive things that are happening so sorry for them I'm happy you mentioned uh, the fact that they should see what others are talking about some people still do not want to come to the street so they look at the TV stations and maybe social media to get their news and try to understand what's happening on the ground how would you describe your own news consumption? How do you get your news? I get my news from different sources. I don't get it from one. I don't believe one. Sometimes, uh, even if I'm aware, I can maybe listen to something and believe it. Because there's an intelligentsia working and they will make you believe it. Because they know you, you, you are a passionate person, for example. Uh, and then you will spread the news. So I try to count for 10 for 20 ask around make sure that the news is right I get it from WhatsApp I get it from the TV I get it from the internet and then from the streets so we are living now in a, in a world where they can change your mind just by putting pressure on the media uh, sending false news so you should be aware about your news don't just spread it my last question to you, um, in a couple of years, if you're looking back at this moment, what do you hope people will remember about this? I hope they will remember that they went on the streets without any politician or politics putting pressure on them or making them go. I want to remember and I want them to remember that this is your revolution. It shouldn't stop. You shouldn't go back in time and you can be on the streets again and maybe next time it will be 5 million, not 2 million or 3 million. So I want to remember this moment that they are liberated, they are no longer slaves. Elia Haber signing off from Martyr Square for the Beirut Banyan.